Yeah, are you familiar with the concept of the life review? I'm vaguely familiar with the concept yeah. of the life review. So I learned about it from a guy named Daniel Brinkley. He wrote mm. a book called Saved by the Light back in the 90s, and he was struck by lightning. Like, I think it was oh, really? in 1975. And Jeffrey Kreipel wrote a book about a lady who was struck by lightning. Yes. Uh, I don't remember her name, but I- Neither I, do I, 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 I. remember the story, though. It's yeah. It's a fucking wild story. It's, it's wild, right? And, but so what the life review is, about 20% of people who have had near-death experiences report uh, the life review. And what they say is it's like going back and reviewing every part of your life, like everything you've done, but not just watching it, it's like you're re-experiencing it from the point of view of other people. So like in Daniel's case, he literally shot people because he was in the military mm -hmm. and in Vietnam. Yeah. And he said he had to feel what it was like to have the bullet come and, and you know, what happened to that guy. And, and earlier he was a bully and he used to beat up kids when he was in. Uh, and he had to feel what it was like to be beat up by himself. But more than that, there's something called the ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And the ripple effect is where you see what happened to, let's say you killed somebody, you see what happened to their family because that guy's not around anymore. Mm. Uh, so you see the ripple effects of your actions. And so uh, Daniel called it a holographic panoramic 360 degree review of your life. And I remember thinking about that and thinking, okay, well, if, if we say, if we take that at face value, uh, and this is where I get into a lot of arguments with scientists, because I say, look, if a thousand people if one person says they've been to China, it's okay to say China probably doesn't, we don't know if China exists or not. But if a thousand people have been to China, and even if some of them have slight differences, mm -hmm. there's probably something like China out there if these people are reporting it to you. Mm -hmm. Now, they may describe it slightly differently. They may have gone to different parts of China. You know, one might say it's mountainous. One might say it's a right. beach by the ocean. Uh, but there's something there. And that's with near-death experiences and life reviews, there must be something there. And so I said, well, how would you implement that? Uh, like, what's the mechanism right. techno-scientifically? Well, a few years ago, uh, around the same time that I was doing the, the VR story with the ping pong, uh, I was involved in a startup that was taking a game like, let's say, Fortnite. At the time, we were using League of Legends. And so if you've played League of Legends, you know, you're playing it on a, on a 2D screen. And you're seeing, you know, the, the different characters fight with each other and you're kind of looking down on it. And he said, you could put on a virtual reality headset and you could basically put yourself into the game at any XYZ coordinate. Wow. Uh, and so there's a game called uh, uh, CSGO, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which was a first person shooter and took place in like kind of the desert in Iraq or something. Mm -hmm. It's probably during those years when, when it came out. And we would replay that game session but you could see your character shooting the other character, but you would be at the point of view of the other person. So you'd see, you know, kind of your character shooting them. Now, we didn't, we didn't record any feelings because it's just VR. Right. But to me, that brings up an interesting possibility. The reason you can have a life review is because we're in a virtual reality and every, the entire 3D world is being uh, recorded in a way and you can replay it from any XYZ coordinate within the game. Uh, and you can experience it from any person's point of view from the game. Just like we could go to any time within the recording of a game and we could figure out how to redraw or mm -hmm. replay mm -hmm. what happened at the time. Right. And just like there's a lot of uh, content on YouTube that's just video game sessions, right? People just recorded themselves. And Twitch obviously is live streaming. Mm -hmm. But on YouTube, the most popular content for a while was, in fact, just these video game recordings. Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, and it's interesting because I remember my, my nephew was like three or four years old, and he would say to his father, my brother, he would say, oh, I want to watch Star Wars. And my brother would say, oh, you want to watch the Star Wars movie? He goes, no, I want to watch the man and the woman play the Star Wars game. That's so wild. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. But a life review is sort of like that. Like We can use that as an analogy mm -hmm. to say we, we are looking back at our mm -hmm. gameplay mm -hmm. session and what these near-death experiencers say is they themselves are doing the judging. Like the being of light is there, but they're like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Why? Because when I said that to my mom, uh, I, met a, I met a woman recently who had a life review and I think she like pulled out all the flowers that, that her mom had taken so much time to put in the garden. Mm -hmm. And now she saw, she was able to experience how sad her mom was 
because she had put all that effort into the flowers. Now, what is the difference between one of these? Because so these life reviews happen when somebody is unconscious, right? Like when you get struck by lightning. I remember the woman who who Jeffrey Kripal wrote about. She was unconscious for a couple minutes, maybe ten minutes or something like this. Yes. And she described sure. being. She described like two or three weeks worth of time going by and like sitting in this garden, right? And and talking to these universal godlike beings or something like this and, and having conversations and meeting her grandfather, I think all kinds of crazy stuff. But like, I was, I'm always curious, like what's the difference between that and getting very close to like dying, like where you see, like you could very easily die right here because this happened to me before where I almost drowned a couple, one time in particular. And I had my life flashing more, you know, people say my life flashed before my eyes. Right. And that it wasn't like a, a very in-depth three-dimensional projection of everything in my life from other people's perspectives like you talked about. Yeah. But it's more just like all your your most fond, loving memories mm. of your life kind of just like all of a sudden pop into your head and you're like, oh my God, I have to make peace with this before I'm, dead, before I'm gone. Right. Which is a, you know, it's a bizarre pheno phenomenon that I've experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very interesting. And yeah. like I said, only about 20% of people who've had near-death experiences mm. report life reviews, but that doesn't mean, it uh, could also mean they didn't go far enough. Yes. They weren't close enough to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a death experience, right. if you will, right? Right. Uh, and some people report gardens in particular, some people mm. report crystal cities that they visited. Yeah, I wonder, does it, does it line up with their religious ideologies, their pre-existing religious views? In some cases it does, but in other cases it doesn't. It's interesting that uh, you know some people will see Jesus, for example, uh, as uh, the being of light is mm -hmm. would be presented as Jesus. Some people see just their relatives uh, who are taking them along, and the being of light is just a being of light. Some people see an angel. Some people say it's God. So I personally think that even what we see after we die is another kind of simulation that's kind of created for us, like in the sense of like the garden. Okay, this garden is, mm -hmm. is created for us because it's a peaceful scene. It's kind of what we would need uh, to recover a little bit from everything that's come mm. along. Uh, and But there are actual beings there. They just present themselves differently depending on your uh, predisposition, whether it's you know particular religious disposition, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But they're remarkably similar. I mean, there have been studies of, uh, of uh, near-death experiences in the Islamic world, for example, and there's less of people reporting it. It's interesting, but the ones that do report them report very similar things. Hmm. Uh, now I went into, so the, you know, in my book, there's a whole section dedicated to religion. So I went back hmm. to the di different religions to see, okay, is there something related to this life review, uh, which relates to me to the idea of being in a virtual reality because it can be replayed or at least recorded if it can be replayed. Uh, and it turns out there is, but they use different metaphors because they had to explain it to people, you know, 2000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So like in, in uh, the Bible uh, and in uh, Judaism and Christianity, there are the recording angels who, and you can find, you know, pictures of statues in Washington, D.C. with the recording angels where, you know, it's an angel with a book in the book of life. Mm -hmm. And they're writing down who gets into heaven and who doesn't get into heaven. Oh, wow. Or St. Like Peter. Like Santa's elves. Like Santa's elves, right. They're actually looking at the- uh, Who's naughty go. or nice. Who's naughty or nice. And so some people say like St. Peter is actually looking at your actual deeds. But yeah, here, here's like an image that that's very popular uh, huh. of a recording angel. Now, uh, they don't get into a lot of detail in it, yeah. but in the Quran, they actually do get into much more detail. Mm -hmm. They have something called the scroll of deeds. Okay, scroll is, you know, long mm -hmm. Santa's list, right? Right. Uh, and they say there's two angels. They're called the recording angels. And what they do is they write down all your good deeds and they write down all your bad deeds. And then when you die, there's actually a verse in the Quran that says that what judgment day really is, right? Because we think of judgment day as God saying you get to go to heaven or you get to, you know, you get to go to hell mm -hmm. uh, in at least the Western Abrahamic, you know, religions or purgatory, say. But... There's actually a verse that says, on the day of reckoning, your book will be open. Read your book and you yourself are sufficient to be the reckoner. Meaning, now again, they were using a book metaphor, mm -hmm. which is a technology, I mean, it's a technological metaphor. Yeah, yeah. But, and they were using angels, 
But if you think about it, what they're really saying is that you're going to have a life review, <laughs> that it's a virtual reality of some kind. Mm. You're going to replay everything that you did because they don't they don't mean literally there's angels sitting there with feather pens writing down, you know, he got up today and he went to work and he mm. got into a car crash, right? Yeah. They're just saying it's being recorded somehow. And so today we can use an updated technological metaphor for that, which is that we're recording the whole scene and we're going to replay it for you. And you are going to look at it and say, oh, damn, I shouldn't have done that. Or I had agreed in this life I was going to work on my you know, aggression or my greed or whatever I was going to, or my compassion and look what happened. I forgot to do at that time. So let me do better yeah. next time. And then it turns out, you know, so we've talked about kind of the Western religions, but even within like say Hinduism, mm -hmm. they actually have a God, a minor God uh, called Chitragupta. And who is he? He's the record keeper. And he sits next to Yama, the God of death. And what is he doing? He's like recording all the things that you do to try to determine where your karma will take you to like uh, a heavenly realm or not. Now, again, the angels and these minor gods, they're not really meant to be, in my opinion, uh, you know, actual entities per se. Right. They're just functions, like a recording angel. It doesn't mean you and I really have these, you know, two little angels on our shoulder. Right. Uh, it's a record, it's a function. And the function is to record mm -hmm. what happens. And how are you going to explain that to somebody a couple thousand years ago? You're mm -hmm. going to say, well, maybe there's a book and there's an angel right. and there's an infinite number of angels. So they're all doing this kind of stuff. Right. And so I believe that most religions have come about by using technological metaphors or other metaphors to try to explain this process that may be ineffable, right? Which is a term that's used a lot with like near-death experiencers, which means it can't be put into words. Right. That there's something profound, but they need to put it in words that we can understand. Mm. Uh, and I think the simulation hypothesis is an evolution of those metaphors. So you can think of it on a continuum. You can think of it as literally a computer simulation, or you can think of it as a metaphor for something like a simulation that's very advanced mm. and complex. It's a good way for us to be able to understand it because we are now getting to the point where we understand information science. Right. <laughs>